Welcome to our webinar dealing with person-centered planning and transition and the ways that technology can help the process. This session is going to be recorded and will be available to you on our Arc of Westchester technology page along with a copy of our PowerPoint uh, file. Just to uh, introduce ourselves, I'm Jordan Jankis and I'm at the Arc of Westchester and my role is coordinator of person-centered and cognitive supports. Uh, my job is to help people achieve their personal goals and if that can be helped by low or high tech, I'm there to help them come up with a solution. In 2016, Arc of Westchester became CQL certified and ensuring the satisfaction of the people I serve is a big part of my job. I also happen to be the proud father of Jessica, who is a great gal and every day manages to deal with and conquer the challenges of having multiple disabilities. I'm also joined today by Karen Horowitz, our Transition Services Director. Hello everyone. Um, I am, as Jordan said, the Transition Services Director here at ARC. I work with both families on individual uh, transition plans, as well as working with school districts and other parent groups to try and help educate on transition and support the general community on that very difficult transition from high school services to adult services. So since uh, 2014, Arc of Westchester started focusing on how everyday affordable personal technology could make a difference in the lives of the people we serve. Since then, we've learned a lot about this important field of smartphones, tablets, and other devices, and through a grant we received from the Coleman Institute for Cognitive Disabilities back in 2015, we were able to establish a technology-related page on our website and begin this series of webinars. Additionally, we'll be holding our second annual Tech Supports for Cognition and Learning on May 19th at Mercy College and the Coleman Institute will be helping to support that. I'd also like to tell you before I forget about some upcoming events at Arc of Westchester. If you're in the local area, the great events to uh, participate in. We're going to have a Family Resource Day on Saturday, March 18th from 8.30 to 1 o'clock. And as it says, you can learn about uh, all types of uh, resources that are available to you in Westchester. And I'll also be having an e-cafe there where you can come and try out various devices like iPads and iPhones and sample some apps. Unbelievably, this is a free event, so please, uh, we hope to see you there. You can register online at our Arc of Westchester webpage. Another event that's coming up in April, on April 19th, is an evening event, our Linkages Transition Fair. How many years is it? 12, 14, 15? I believe uh, this is the 14th or 15th year. We've been doing it a long time. <laughs> so if you have a a uh, person in your family that is transitioning from high school or they're, and they're, they've graduated from high school but they yet, haven't yet gotten involved in programs, this is a great opportunity to meet an awful lot of vendors that provide a variety of services. It goes from 6 to 8 o'clock at night. Uh, it's again free. You can sign up on our webpage. So at the Arc of Westchester, we do things like community presentations, like the uh, events coming up. We do individual and group technology instruction. I go into folks', uh, folks houses and I work with their uh, sons and daughters on iPads. We have the technology page that's part of the Arc of Westchester uh, website where we post the recordings of these webinars, but we also po uh, post some resources like uh, various apps, new and upcoming technology, and we're hoping that it turns into an interactive blog at some point. And we also, on that site, we promote the Declaration 
for the rights of people with cognitive disabilities to technology and information access. This is an uh, initiative of the Coleman Institute in Colorado and we would hope that you would visit on our website on the technology page. There's a place where you can go and sign up to endorse the declaration. We need your support to make sure that all people are digitally literate and we ask you to show your support and also indicate that you heard about it through the Ark of Westchester. In this day and age, if somebody doesn't know how to use email or doesn't have ex uh, access to an iPhone or a, a, any other kind of smartphone or a tablet, they have a lot, they're much further behind than other people in their ability to independently function in the community. We want to see if we can make having technology available to people with disabilities a basic right as other rights are under the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is the new curb cut of the 21st century. On to the topic of today's webinar. How can tech help us plan and transition to the adult world? And I'm going to turn it over to Karen just for a couple of seconds because, you know, our focus here is on tech, but more importantly, it's on the difference that a person goes through from their educational experience to joining the world of adult services. They're very different things. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, I think, you know, we want to be thinking about shifting mindset and shifting how we think about how services and supports are provided, whether someone is transitioning into adult services to go to a college program, to a work program, to a day services program, everything changes for them. The protections that they have and the laws that cover them under the K through 12 system are changing. And there aren't necessarily as many people advocating on behalf of the individual. So what we really want to be thinking about is, as you approach those transition periods and in that those transition ages is thinking about how can the individual become more of an advocate, have a better understanding of their own strengths and challenges, and be able to discuss that and be able to think about what their interests are, not necessarily what everyone else's interests are for them. So getting involved in the transition planning should start early. Um, for those of you who are already well versed in this, 15 is when transition discussions need to begin in the high school, but it's never too early to start thinking about what someone might want to do. Now, that being said, I don't know a ton of 15 year olds, disability or no disability, who know what they want to do with their life. I don't know a lot of 20 year olds, disability or no disability, that know what they want to do with their lives. So it's a challenge for anyone. Um, but I think the most important piece is to the ability or the extent that they can for someone to really get involved and understand their own needs. That means going to IEP meetings. That means um, if they're able to um, break down evaluations um, to understand what the specific challenges are, what the specific strengths are, and learning how to kind of translate that into future goals. If I have a strength in A, what might that mean in terms of a career B or in terms of education C? So we really want to be getting individuals well versed in what their own abilities are. And then there's a piece of advocacy, understanding it, but then also being able to speak about it. For example, if someone's going to college with a disability, they're going to need to be the one to go to a disability services office and ask for accommodations and be able to explain what their challenges are, what accommodations they need, and they're not going to have a team of professionals sitting around a CSC table to explain that for them. Likewise, if someone wants to go into a work uh, situation, maybe they're going to go to Access VR or maybe they're going to go into supported employment through an agency like ours, they're going to need to sit down with a vocational counselor and talk about the kinds of things that they want to do, the kind of work that they want to do, 
what's of interest to them so that a, an employment plan can be created and so that they can work towards that, that employment goal. So the more involved and the more education we can provide so that an individual can both understand what their needs are and be able to speak to it, the better off they will be going forward into the adult world. Mm -hmm. And one other part of the adult world is when it comes to that time when every young person wants to uh, spread their wings and move into their own place, mm -hmm. it's so important that they have the ability to speak up for where they want to live, who they want to live with, and the location, what kind of, uh, you know, things that they want to do during the day. All these expressive things that we take for granted. Unfortunately, sometimes in the school system, we rely too much on the parents and the teachers to try and come up with those solutions, but we really need to have that from the individual. I want to just focus on more than tech initially. I want to talk about the individual, the me, that important person that is the individual transitioning from school into the adult world. Young people need to establish their identity, their own space, and communicate these things to the world. I don't think too many people can take their mom or dad along with them to a job interview. So they have to develop those skills that perhaps with the support of a job coach they'll be able to go and do an interview but they really have to work on that. And once they start thinking about themselves they can use their own profiles at so many different venues like Karen was saying, you know, if you're going to have an IEP meeting, the person should be there. It's essential that the people on the uh, CSE committee really understand that this is a person and not just a pile of papers that they're reading a report on and getting a diagnosis. When they go into the adult world, it becomes an ISP meeting, an individual services plan, and they should be the focus of the meeting. They should, if they have the capabilities, actually run the meeting. And when you think about it, resumes, if you're coming just out of school, and this is for anybody, you know, with or without a disability, what the heck kind of experience do you have when you're 17 or 18 years old? What you can really sell is who you are as a person. You know, what are your qualities? What are your interests, your values? Are you reliable? Are you somebody that can get along with others? These are the things that you can put into a virtual resume or almost a portfolio on the individual. And in the adult world and in the educational world, I think it's really essential that the people that support the individuals really understand the capabilities of who they're dealing with. And I'll also add that, you know, in those meetings, it's very often important to think about what the individual wants. And we all have our own expectations of what, you know, as a parent or as a professional, oh, well, this person could work, so they should work. Well, did anyone ask the individual, do you want to work? Really important to try and put aside the expectations for that individual based on what you think they can or will want to do and let them speak to what they do want to do. Right. And especially with folks with cognitive disabilities, when you ask them a question of do you want to work, lots of times you have to give them examples of what work is. You know, it's an abstract concept to a lot of teens exactly what that means. That you show up for work every day. What does somebody in a supermarket do? What does somebody at McDonald's actually do? What are the tasks? So we can ask, you know, do you want to work? And then somebody can say, yes, I do. And well, I have a job with, uh, for you at this supermarket and you have to move the carts around in the snow and in the hot weather. And they'll say, I don't like that. Well, I guess that's not the job for you. So. It's always very helpful during this process 
that you ask just not one question, but the same question several different ways to try and get to the truth and also to help the person just through the mental process of thinking about what their potentials are. So through this whole process of finding out about yourself, you know, it's a great way to express yourself, think about yourself. Uh, you're not just having people talk to you, you're talking to others. And, you know, we've grown up in this society with such a reliance on experts, but who's a better expert than the individual themselves? They know how they feel, they know how they feel. Uh, physically, emotionally, and they're an expert on themselves. And this is also a great learning experience because it involves a subject that you know very well, and that's yourself. If you use tech to do these stories, it's something that is easily updated. I don't know if any of you are on the call that remember the days of typewriters and resumes and having them printed out. We don't have to do that anymore. We can customize our story to the needs of a job or the needs of ongoing life. So how do you start? Again, don't think of technology first, think of the person. So first step before you even decide what kind of platform to use to tell your story, you have to gather some information, and they can be gathered in lots of ways, you know, writing notes on sticky notes and posting them around the room. Uh, take a lot of photos and videos of the individual doing interesting things, edit it down so that you can show it to folks, and then you also have to decide, is this just going to be a slideshow kind of presentation, or are you going to narrate it? As we go through some of the apps later, you'll see some apps that are very good at having a personal, a personal narration included. Tech is a huge area. It could be something very exotic or something very simple. Here's a tool that we've used based upon uh, the work of a French-based agency called L'Arche. It's a simple table that captures some of the major things about a person. And if you're a person with a disability, that's just one thing. That's the tip of the iceberg. But you're also a son, you're a singer, a student, a sports nut, uh, a friend. You know, you can go on and on with all the things that makes up, make up an individual. And it's important for people to start thinking about who are they? They're much more than just one thing. Same thing with, I love. What do you love? What are the things that you enjoy doing? What are the things that you don't like doing? Do you dislike loud noises? Do you like dislike busy environments? If it's you dislike busy environments, maybe a fast-paced retail setting won't be the best job place for you. And what is your dream? And this can be a simple dream it could be, you know, just something that you hope for in the future, something basic. It's, you know, and this, again, applies to any young person with or without a disability. You know, are you, uh, what do you do? And what do you have your parents or your staff do for you? How many kids use an alarm clock or how many parents go in and yell at the kid to get up? When you're an adult, nobody's going to wake you up except you, and you have to learn that so that you're not late for work. You know, basic hygiene. How, how often should you take a shower? You know, how long are you going to take for breakfast? How long is it going to take you to get dressed and out the door? And who's making a lunch for you? I think if you're going into adulthood, it'd be a good idea, if you're capable of it, to try and learn how to make your own lunch. A problem, I'm sure, Karen, you've seen this, is when people leave high school, all of a sudden they become, if they're not planning for it in advance, socially isolated in the world. And their contacts often are just with their parents. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the social circle is, tends to be around school. So um, when that ends, what happens after that? And certainly trying to find ways to get involved 
before you leave school so you have sort of a smooth transition socially into other uh, programming and other opportunities, social opportunities would be important. And then learning is the next one on the list and nobody would agree that learning stops at high school. It keeps going on throughout your whole life. We don't spend a lot of time on this subject, but Karen's pretty expert in this as far as post-secondary opportunities and how to uh, take advantage of it. There are some people out there that want to go on to some kind of college setting, whether it's a vocational college uh, setting or it's a fully academic, but you want to take advantage of that. Absolutely, and there are both credit-bearing and non-credit-bearing options for people. So you can pretty much find something for everyone who wants to have some sort of experience or exposure to post-secondary learning experiences. Just think of uh, descriptions that you may have seen in IEPs or diagnostic reports or something from a speech-language professional or a PT. Many of them are written in ways that are not person-centered, and they deal with the deficits, not with the abilities of a person. It's uh, a very limiting picture lots of times. So let's take a moment and focus on Jessica, my daughter, and just take a look at different ways that Jessica could be viewed by the world. So Let's take the clinical view and just the facts, just the facts, ma'am. So she's an adult woman. Cognitively, she's quote unquote low functioning. She suffers from a toxic cerebral palsy. She's very unstable in her balance. It's really hard to understand her. She has a lot of communication difficulties. And uh, you have to do a lot of things for her each day, you know, from when she wakes up in the morning to when she goes out to bed at night. She uh, needs a lot of care supports. And she's had a seizure of, uh, a history of seizures in the past. So, you know, there's an awful lot of negatives here. This isn't a rosy picture. Poor Jessica. All right? So... That's sort of like a diagnostic view, but let's take a look at a person-centered view. Let's see the big picture about Jessica. So, Jessica just had a birthday in January. She just turned 38. She loves the attention of a birthday party, and who doesn't? Who's in her circle? Who makes up Jessica's circle? Who is she close to? Well, my wife, her mom, me, sitting there with a computer as usual. And there are more people in Jessica's circle. There's a picture of her with her brother, Justin. And he just got married a while back in uh, Vermont. And she loves hanging with Abby and Justin up in Vermont. They're a big part of her circle. And that circle, that group of people that support her, it's big. And it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, here's some pictures of her aunt and uncle, her cousins, her whole uh, family of uh, aunts and uncles. And these are important things to use when you're telling your story. Because pictures, you know, it's the old saying, pictures are uh, worth a thousand words. And this is really powerful, especially for somebody that isn't uh, that verbal. And, you know, what does she like to do? She loves to take bubble baths, crazy about babies, loves dogs, loves to go riding on horses, loves a baseball game, and she loves to tell people that they just struck out, and uh, she likes to go out to eat. Curious George is a hero to her, and she loves being silly. I don't know if you can see in the picture she's wearing rabbit ears. <laughs> 
but she's a silly gal. And again, she's telling you things just by showing you the picture. She doesn't have a lot of ability to communicate in a clear way. So this PowerPoint is a really effective thing to tell people about her, to show people what she does. She gets around with a walker. She has a wheelchair, but she can push it herself. And, you know, she's fairly independent that way. So PowerPoint is a wonderful, wonderful tool. You know, it's very widely available. And uh, you can get so many uh, examples of uh, pictures that you can incorporate through uh, Google. You get all kinds of advice from uh, the web. And the only thing with PowerPoint, it might be a little bit difficult for some people to manipulate. They're going to need somebody to help them. Jordan, were you telling me that recently there was a teacher that doesn't let her students graduate uh, or transition out until they've all done a PowerPoint of themselves so that Absolutely. they can walk away with that? Absolutely. Cynthia Maletti, I don't know if you're on the call, but a great teacher out of New Rochelle, uh, New Rochelle High School, Every kid that goes into their IEP meeting goes in with a PowerPoint and it shows their uh, abilities, the things they need help with, and their plans for the future. No matter their ability, this is a life skills class of 30 people, everybody gets the chance to talk about themselves through a PowerPoint. So then there's other apps that can help in the whole person-centered planning process. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability right now to show you all the details of these apps, but I'm going to include in the materials on our website links to all the developers so that you could download them and try them out yourself. It's My Future by AbleLink is a program that is, isn't too interactive, but it's a good program just to follow along and have a conversation with an individual about some of the questions that they ask. It's not cheap, it costs a bit of money, but it's a decent program. Mind of my own, I always talk about this program. It's free and it's uh, available on all devices, plus it's also web-based. And it's a, pro a product that comes from the United Kingdom. and it prepares people for meetings or how to work through issues. So it will ask people, uh, your meeting is coming up next week. Who do you want to sit next to you? Who don't you want to sit next to? How are you feeling today? What are the issues that you want to talk about? Uh, do you have any ways of, uh, any ideas about how to resolve some of the things that you are planning? And at the end of this question process, you press a button and it prints out an agenda for the meeting so the person can take this into their IEP or their ISP meeting or whatever meeting and say, these are the things that we're going to talk about. You might have issues on your list, but first I want to talk about mine. So it's a great program. And uh, then there's a sister arc from Schenectady has developed several wonderful apps and My Life Plan is an app that is very interactive and it lets a person answer some basic questions. For example, it'll say, do you get out into the community as much as you would like? And the person can answer in several ways. They can manipulate a smiley face left or right so if they agree, the smiley face gets bigger. If the, they go to the other opposite that they disagree, they don't get into the community, then the smiley face becomes a frown. I tried it before we started, and it was a lot of fun. It actually reminded me of being at the doctor's office when they have the chart about how much pain you're <laughs> how feeling. Much pain. Yeah, yeah. It also gives you the ability to give additional comments by typing, or you can use the microphone and record your comments. And you can also include pictures. Uh, this is a very expensive app. It's $1.99 at the App Store, and it's fantastic. And uh, you can also change the questions to suit the particular things that you're trying to find out. I also liked that it allowed you to 
um, it has a button for needs work. So if it's something yeah. that takes a long time for someone and they want to kind of do it in stages, maybe work on it every day a little bit, a week before a meeting, let's say, it gives you the opportunity to go back in, mark things that need work, and then sh um, mark off that you want to share it at a meeting. Right. And you can uh, take a PDF of the answers of, your, uh, of the questions and bring it to a meeting with you. So it's a wonderful uh, product, and I love the fact that some of the questions are in the voice of self-advocates from Schenectady ARC. So it's a very familiar environment, and I, I think it's just a great product. Pictello from Assistiveware has been around for quite a while and has lots of capabilities. It's much simpler than PowerPoint. It does cost money. I think it's about $18 or $19. But it's interesting in that it's Think of a scrapbook, a picture scrapbook, and you can say things like uh, my first job interview, and you can go through all the steps. Here I am putting on my suit, my suit jacket and my tie. Here I am uh, entering the door of whatever, let's say Kmart, for the interview. And the person could narrate all the steps of it, it and with audio, and you can also add photos and uh, videos to it, and it's really, really uh, a powerful uh, piece of software. You can also share your stories via Pictello's uh, iCloud service, so you can exchange stories with each other. And, you know, we're talking a lot about jobs, but just think about if you said, uh, what did you do? You know, I went on vacation with my house to Lake George. Well, what happened? Wouldn't it be great for somebody to be able to say, well, this is where we stayed, this is where we ate, here I am swimming, and it's just a great way to remember your own personal experiences. And lots of times, especially in the world of work, we have to do things in certain ways. Say like if you're working at McDonald's, you have to make sure that you fill the ketchup dispensers, keep the napkins all together, wipe down the tables, take out the garbage. This program, it's, it's a really powerful program. First then Visual Schedule, or FTVS. And you don't have to have much literacy because it has all these pictures. You can use stock clip art that it has or you can take pictures of a step. So you could use this for jobs. You could also use this for simple things like getting up in the morning and how do I make a cup of coffee with my Keurig machine and take them step by step through the process. You can also add timers onto the task so that uh, if somebody is a little bit of a slow move, mover in the morning, it'll prompt them to uh, go to the next task. We also have another program similar to that one, a little less expensive, but it's pretty good. And this is called CanPlan. CanPlan is from the University of Victoria and very much the same principles as uh, the first then visual schedule. And it will break down a task into its many parts. And so if a job coach were with somebody and they wanted, uh, they got a job in the warehouse at Kmart and it's a complicated job, they have to do a certain set of things each day. This would be great. You could put it on your iPhone, you could put it on your uh, iPad, whichever is easiest and just follow along on your tasks of the day. Here's another item that's sort of like a task uh, reminder. The advantage of this, I've been using it with a young man, the same one that is now going to culinary school, who would forget to say like call paratransit to make appointments, he would forget to water the plants in his apartment, forget to take his meds, all these things. And it's called home routines. And for each task, that you do, you can get a gold star and then keep track of how many gold stars you get during a certain period. So it's a nice interface, it's very friendly and very happy and it's very motivating. The 
young man I mentioned, he, you know, after this he didn't have any problems remembering when to call paratransit for his ride. Again, back to Schenectady Arc, you know, they have another wonderful app, uh, which is called, uh, uh, I think it's, I forget, Goal, Plan, Do, or something like that. Go to the Schenectady Arc site. They have all these listed there. And the nice thing about this is it's one thing to say, I want to get a job. Well, what does that involve? You know, you have to basically say what kind of job. You have to come up with some kind of portfolio or resume about yourself. You have to talk to a job coach if you need that kind of help. You have to explore uh, sending out uh, letters and doing applications and going for interviews, learning all those techniques. So it takes any kind of goal and breaks it down into its component steps. So it, it, it's a wonderful program. There's another one that's similar to that, Master Task Plus. These are all done by Schenectady Arc and a local developer up there called Apps by George, and they make wonderful products, very, very affordable products, too. So we're getting near the end of this, and I wanted to ask uh, a, a question about uh, future webinars. We've been kicking around the idea, and if you think of it, it's going to be of interest, please drop me an email and let me know. A lot of these products I would like to show in great depth, and I'm thinking of contacting people like Assistive Wear for Pictello or other products like the ones we showed from Schenectady Arc, and have them do a webinar just on a specific application, you know, maybe a 15 or 20 minute session so that you can really understand what the uh, application does and whether it can be of help to you. So if this is something that you might be interested in, I'd be glad to uh, reach out to some vendors and software developers out there and see if we can't develop some sort of partnership and get this done. <laughs>